Thank you for choosing to watch this video. My name is Justin Pineda and I'm here to share my experience on how to prepare and pass the Certified Information System Security Professional Certification Exam. The CISSP exam is one of the gold standard exams in cybersecurity. At the same time, it is one of the most challenging exams because of the vast independent topics that often overwhelm and confuse exam takers. Hopefully, I'll be able to share some tips and tricks on how you can maximize your time and study or early for the exam. So, let's start. Okay, so things to talk about. So I have listed three main topics for today. So the first one is what is the CISP exam? So for um, this topic, we'll be discussing more about uh, the CISSP domains, maybe the coverage, some history, and statistics on CISSP. The second topic would be the preparation for the exam. So there are so many resources out there. So which resources should you be uh, focusing on? And what type of exam preparation should you be doing? Um, study notes, CBT, or listening to podcasts. And the actual um, back practice exams. The third um, topic would be the post-exam action item. So for example, you already passed the exam. What are the next steps? You have to create um, your account, get an endorsement. Um, you have to sign a membership and agree with the terms and conditions set by ISC Square. So there. Okay, so let's start with the first topic. What is the CSP exam? So CISSP stands for Certified Information System Security Professional. It's the most recognized certification in the information security market. It's also called Inch Deep Mile Wide Certification Exam because of um, the vast domains um, coverage. So you're not um, you're not expected to know the very uh, detailed information about the topic like for example firewall you're not going to be a specific commands for the firewall but you need to be able to understand how it works and which type of firewall should be used in a specific scenario mm -hmm. and then experience requirements you need to have at least five full um five years full time work in at least two of the uh, cssp cbk domains so if not Okay, you will become an associate of ISC squared after passing the exam. And then until, until such time that you gain the experience, then that's the only time that you will get the CISSP um, certification. Okay, so for the coverage of the CISSP, we have um, eight domains, so ranging from security and risk management, asset security, Security, Architecture, and Engineering, Communication, Network Security, Identity and Access Management, Security Assessment and Testing, Security Operations, and Software Development Security. CISSP exam information. So it uses what we call the CAT or Computerized Adaptive Testing. So in CAT, the algorithm checks the probability that you will pass based on the number of um, correct answers that you have provided. So as um, the exam progresses, the questions become harder until such time that the uh, algorithm determines that you have already passed the exam. <clears throat> exam length is three hours. Number of items is 100 to 150 items. Again, it depends on the number of correct answers that you've already provided. So the more um, correct answers, you may finish um, question 100, or some it will extend up to 150. Passing is 700 out of 1,000 points. 
you cannot go back to the previous questions because it's really CAP. Once you submit, you'll go to the next and to the next. So dividing it with uh, the number of items, 150, and the total exam in three hours, you have approximately 1 minute and 12 seconds per question. So for information, um, you can visit the ISC Squared website to learn more about CISSP CAP. So for a second topic, preparation for the exam. So for booking, okay, you, you have to create your ISC Square account in person view. So there's the link there. And the exam cost is 699 US dollars. Okay, so when you start um, studying for the CISSP exam, you will see that there are so many resources available and you will be overwhelmed. So for my experience, I started reading random security books. I took um, other security certification exams before. That's why it already gave me some idea on, um, on some of the domains in the CISSP. Uh, so you can pick different books uh, randomly at first and then uh, you just have to make sure that these references that you got um, cover all the security domains okay. and then um, you can buy the official book later on and then you have to determine which domains are you strong and which domains are you weak or not familiar with because um, for the domains that you're not familiar with you have to double the effort okay. so for the actual resources um, i started with cbt nuggets or computer-based training um, for me to have a quick grasp of all the domains because just by sitting and uh, watching videos, I'll be able to um, get those domains that I am not familiar with. So I used InfoSec Institute. They have a very good instructor and um, resources on CISSP. So but you have to pay for it. Um, there's an alternative called Cybrary. It's um, a cybersecurity community that offers different um, free and um, paid uh, cybersecurity courses. So you can you can also check cyber. You just have to pay that account. And then I used um, Sean Harris, uh, the all-in-one book. Although it's very very um, full of details, very very long. <laughs> it's um, and it, it also has its um, um, online practice exam counterpart which is free you can, you can visit it it's overkill and there's so much content but it's a very good training ground for you um, to be exposed with the specific definition of terms and specific steps in the framework etc <laughs> um, there's also uh, a shorter version of the book, CISSP Review from Eric Conrad. There's also side decks. And there's also what we call the Sunflower. It's um, like a cheat sheet or just a, um, a summary of some of the key points and domains in, in uh, the CISSP exam. And I also uh, follow, join a group. Uh, CISSP Facebook group um, led by Luke Ahmed. It's very good because you um, you can post um, questions um, wherein where you do not know the answer or um, you may dispute the answer, and the members of the Facebook group will be there for you for for you. You'll be able to answer. Um, your questions. Okay, so here are some of the resources that I use. So the first one is the Sunflower Guide. Um, it says there that um, it, it's free okay, for informational training and commercial purposes. Okay. <clears throat> the second one is the All-in-One Book by Sean Harris. 
Although this is not the latest version before she died. Um, but the questions are very useful if you're going to use it for the practice exam. And then the third one is the CISSP exam preparation. This is the study group that I, I mentioned um, I mentioned a while ago. Okay, so you can post any questions, um, exam related, um, support questions, you need clarification, etc. So once you have booked your exam, so you will be receiving an email and we'll um, show you the schedule, your exam center, and some of the reminders. So for admission policy, you should be there early, at least 30 minutes before the exam. And then you need to bring um, a valid ID. And usually these are government uh, IDs wherein there is a signature and photo. And then you will be providing your signature and submit a palm vein scan. So I, I did this when um, I went to my exam center. Okay, you will have your photo taken. <clears throat> and then in the usual um, exam center, all of your um, belongings, even your watches and um, smartphones, reviewers, etc., will be placed in a locker. Okay, and then um, you will be asked to uh, wait and then they will prepare for your um, they will prepare your exam, uh, your computer for the exam, and then they will escort you to your um, station. Okay. And then uh, I did this uh, a couple of times because of work. So if you need to reschedule, you need to reschedule it at least 24 hours. And um, there's a fee for that. Um, it's uh, $50 for exam reschedule. So uh, when I took the exam, um, the exam room was full and it was very cool. Um, I was able to maximize the entire three hours. Um, because there's also a, a countdown in the in the in the monitor, and then I reached the <clears throat> 150th question, and then I click submit, um, and then. The computer loaded and I was asked to leave the room. And then I went to the receptionist and then they um, they got a piece of paper from the printer and then they put it in the, in a brown envelope. I opened it and then I found out that I passed. So when you pass the exam, you won't be able to see your score. It will only tell you um, if you pass or fail. And then you will um, receive an email like similar to this one and say that you have permission to pass the exam. So the next step would be the endorsement. So we'll have to create um, an account in ISC Squared and then <clears throat> match it with the um, email that you used and then look for an endorser. So if you know somebody, with a CISSP certified, you can get um, as the certification number and input it there. <clears throat> and then if you don't have any endorsers, you can ask ISC Square to have someone um, endorse you. Um, but there are other or, or additional requirements, such as you have to put um your work experience and proof that you have uh, worked for a specific time so let's now go to the third um topic which is the post exam action items a majority of these items uh, i've already mentioned in the previous slide so after passing the exam you have to create your isc squared account and this will be linked to your um email <clears throat> And then after passing um, the exam, you have to indicate an endorser who is a CISSP um, certified. It can be a boss or a peer. 
And um, if you don't have any known endorser, you can ask ISC Squared to look for you, uh, an, an endorser. However, you have to indicate your work experience and at the same time, you have to provide proof um, of your work experience. And then confirmation takes four to eight weeks. And then afterwards, you'll get an email again. And then afterwards, you have to pay a membership fee of 125 US dollars. And then afterwards, uh, you will be awarded the CISSP um, certification. Okay, so um, that sums up the topics for today. So um, for the next episode, we'll be um, choosing specific topics for the CISSP exam, and then we'll have um, short discussions on each of these, and then we'll have some practice exercises. So if you're interested, um, stay tuned for the next episode. I also run an IT security firm based in the Philippines called Pineda Cybersecurity Specialist. It aims to help small businesses be cybersecurity aware by providing workshops together with my peers at various aspects of cybersecurity. We also provide consulting services such as regulatory, administrative, and technical services. For more details, you may visit our website at www.penetacybersecurity.com. Our goal of helping secure small businesses is accompanied by a recognition by the Philippine Department of Information and Communication Technology as a cybersecurity provider both for vulnerability assessment and penetration testing or VTT and information security management system or ISFS. To learn more cybersecurity topics, you can subscribe and follow us in YouTube, Patreon, and Facebook. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!